Welcome to another exciting tutorial. Today we're going to be working on channels for selecting and color range to create this color splash effect with putting together several pictures. So, we have another example here that we can take a look at as well. This is from Photoshop Essentials. They've done a color splash effect. Not quite like Sin City, but some people might call it that, but that's more of a black, white, and red color scheme where this has your grayscale in between. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and drag in one of my pictures here. We're going to start with the Golden Gate Bridge. And this particular one is by Pedro, and I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but we're going to go ahead and start with that. So I'm going to unlock this layer. Just go ahead and call this Golden Gate Bridge. And then I'm going to pull in another picture. And this particular one here is a query by Sage Solar. All of these pictures are off of the Flickr Commons. And I'll put some links in the YouTube channel here. I'm going to go ahead and rasterize this layer so it's not a smart object for now as we haven't really talked about smart objects at this point. And I'm just going to kind of plan where maybe I want this for now. I'm thinking right here. I'm just going to put it at the bottom. All right, so we've already kind of researched and talked about channels a little bit. So let's go over to channels and take a look here. So we have our red, green, and blue together. We also have our red channel, our green channel, and our blue channel. Now currently it's looking at all the layers together, so I'm just going to go ahead and hide the Golden Gate Bridge picture for now and just look at our channels. So to use these to select, what I want to do is find the one with the most contrast, which in this case would be blue, obviously, because of the sky. So let's go ahead and use this uh, to create a selection. So the first thing I'm going to do is just right click duplicate this, and I'm going to call this Alpha. Bam! Switch over to my alpha, turn off the blue. There we go. So now we have a fourth or fifth channel here now that we've created, the alpha channel. Now for this one, I'm going to go up to Image, Adjustments, and I'm going to throw in Threshold. And it looks like it's kind of popping off the screen here, but it's called Threshold. Now what Threshold does is it turns the image into literally white and black. So this would be great if we were doing a Sin City effect. And the baby is very excited about this too. <laughs> Alright, so what we want to do is bring this down so we can get the most contrast for our selection. So we're going to get kind of close. So I'm just going to kind of, it's okay to have some white spots in here. We're going to fix that in a second. What I am looking at is the line on our landscape. Yes, sir, baby, we are. Photoshop is just too exciting for a baby, too. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and there we have our alpha. Now what I can do is, on this alpha channel, I am going to use a hard brush, and I'm just going to kind of fill in all this white stuff. We can do Control plus and minus to zoom in here. Whoa, getting a little crazy there. Alright, so I'm just going to take a moment to fill this out. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video so you can see the final image so you don't have to sit here and watch me do this to the whole thing. All right, at this point, I've kind of touched up most of this uh, fairly well where I like it. Now, I could kind of paint in here and fill this in with black, but it would be much easier to actually see what I'm doing. And we haven't really talked about quick mask mode, which is also this button here. But what we're going to do is turn on all our layers. And even though I turned them on, I still have my alpha selected. And so I'm going to have to switch to white now. 
I lied, black, and you are going to paint the red in just around the areas that we want it to mask out, so to speak. So it's doing a good job with that bush. Get these rocks here. So I knew what you'd want to come along here and fix up anything that needs to get touched up. So the red is actually like a mask currently. So if I if I turn off these layers, you can see the alpha and what I've done. So we don't necessarily have to keep these fence lines here, although that would probably still be a good idea. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and, and leave that like that. So what I can do now is I can actually select my black. I'm going to turn on all my channels and turn off the alpha. I'm going to go back to layers, and I'm now going to create a mask. Now we have this nice mask where we've masked off the background. And we might need to touch it up a bit. We still got some blue in there. So, let's turn on our Golden Gate Bridge here. And we've got our... Now, on CS6, you can double-click the mask, and it'll bring up the options. But being that this is an older version of Photoshop that I'm using here, I'm going to have to go into these options right here just by right-clicking. So, I'm going to click Refine Mask. Now we've already kind of used this before, but just again, we're going to do on layers so you can see what it looks like with the two layers together. We're going to do smart radius and do control plus or minus to zoom in here. With turning on smart radius, then we can adjust the range. Now we're going to want to be careful to how much we adjust this, but thinking right about here maybe. And I'm also going to shift the edge a little bit. Maybe zoom out here just to check it here. I'm going to do a lower radius, like 0.9, and then I'm going to shift the edge. Then at this point, let's go ahead and see what some of the other options look like. So feathering is going to be a little bit too much, it looks like. So let's just leave that at zero, smooth. Might bring that up just a little bit. Let's try... Two. That seems to look okay for now. Let's do decontaminate colors and we can just say new layer with mask and hit OK. And this one uh, we don't need anymore so I can just delete that one. Now we have a pretty good looking mask. Maybe a few flaws here but not too bad. I mean it's blending in well with the water right there. All right, so let's go back to our Golden Gate picture here, and let's bring this up a bit. And I think I'm going to maybe resize it just a little bit. There we go. Now the baby's happy. 
All right. So now we've got our two pictures together. Not looking too bad. Might have done refine edge just a little bit too much. But this is just good practice. So let's go ahead and go now to the Golden Gate Bridge. We're going to hide the quarry. So the Golden Gate Bridge now, we're going to do the color splash effect. right? So in order to do that, first thing we need to do is select a color range. And this is where it gets real exciting. So I'm going to select the red here. Zoom in a little bit. Now, to explain, when you click localize clusters, what it's doing is it's saying this color of red, wherever it's selected, it's guessing that it's going to select locally around that red, and it's not going to select too far away. So that can be really helpful, and it'd be even more helpful if we had brighter reds in this picture. But we've got some red in the mountains. Yes, we do, baby. So, what we're going to want to do is, for now... Let's change the preview to none. And I'm just going to go through shift selecting all the different reds. And if we have selection on, it kind of shows us what we have selected currently. Turn my range up just a bit. So I'm just going to go through here and kind of just select the general area of reds. And you know, I might need some of these reds in this darker area of the bridge. For now, Looks like it froze up on me, so let me redo this selection here. Alright, now that looks pretty good. We've got most of the reds, so I just did this uh, top beam here and then some of the reds down here where the X's are. So, now we could decrease or increase the fuzziness if we wanted to try to get further away or stay closer in. So let's let's try to stay closer in. We just want the bridge to be selected. So I'm going to go ahead and then hit OK. And we can already see some areas that it's selected that we don't want. And that's OK for now. So let's go ahead and create an adjustment layer. And we're going to do black and white. And currently this is opposite. So if you select the mask thumbnail and click Control I, we'll flip it. And voila, there you go. Now, kind of hard to tell, there are some areas where there's some red showing through in the mask. So what we can do is just switch to white and just kind of paint over some of those areas to make sure they're good. So I'm going to get all this down here. And if there's areas of the bridge that weren't selected, I could come back here with black. And I could paint over those areas to make sure that it got all the red on the bridge. Looks like there's a few minor pieces here that it didn't quite get. So if I just look around and say, oh, look here, there's some gray where the black and white is happening. So let's make that... Red. So we'd go through here and clean up this picture to where we have just the reds all showing through this black and white. So we basically get a color splash effect.
So I've got the Golden Gate Bridge now, we've got our masking for the color splash, and we have our quarry, which is in color. So for this part, what I'm going to want to do is I need to desaturate this picture. So what I can do is just with the layer thumbnail selected, we can go up to Image, Adjustments, and you're going to find... The baby's looking where to find it. <laughs> so you're going to find desaturate, or you can also do hue and saturation. But let's just click desaturate, and it automatically makes it black and white. So that's good to go now. Now, if we really wanted to make these reds pop just a little bit more, we could add. an adjustment layer for a hue and saturation and maybe bring up the saturation just a little bit you won't want to bring it up too much or it's going to start really pixelating in here and look in where we can see now exactly what we didn't get in fact I'm going to leave this here for a minute so we can go back to our black and white mask here and with white I'm going to go back in here. Yes, baby, this is a little tedious. I'm going to go back in here and just make sure the mountains are at least deselected. I'm going to leave the red areas here where all these lines are at. Just want to make sure the mountains are good to go. So now I can go back up here and bring the saturation back down. So zero is the normal. So I'm going to bring that up just a little bit to make it really pop. So we have a nice bright red here. And we could also do a levels if we really wanted to. If we wanted to try to change the contrast of the picture. right now I think looks just alright we don't think we really need that so for this particular one I'm just going to delete it and maybe I've got a little extra space on the bottom here going to crop that a little bit. That looks pretty good. Like that. So there we have using channels to select out things. You could use this even for hair or for certain objects and pictures. Uh, we just used it for landscaping. And then we have the color splash effect where we're just having a splash of color show through. <laughs> with that using masking and selecting with color range so that we can get this effect. Now that's all great and we could do that with several different pictures. So you would have to use channels with different settings in a different way. For example, take a look at this burn here done by Nicholas Raymond. I'm just going to go ahead and size this up a little bit. And then let's go ahead and go over to channels and take a look at this. So I'm liking this blue channel here the best, it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one. And I'm going to call this one my rock alpha. And then again, we can go up to Image, Adjustments, and Find Threshold. And I'm just looking at the edge of the bricks, because that's what I'm kind of looking for. So just kind of adjust that to get close to what we're looking for. I think that's fairly good right here. 
Then I'm going to go ahead and take my black brush. And go through here and touch it all up. Here we have it painted out, right? Awesome. So we can turn on RGB and you can see with the red mask what it kind of looks like right now with the alpha. And I just did that fairly quickly, so I'd spend a little bit more time on this to make sure it's nice and smooth. Because I'm sure if we zoomed in, we're going to see uh, some raggedy edges, right? So for this, what I'm going to do is just with the alpha. I'm going to go ahead and select the black area here, hide that, go back over to my layers, right? And I'm going to do a mask with that in it. Now it's backwards, so let's select the mask thumbnail, control I, invert it. And then here we have. the rock piece. So let's move that back up here. So in this case, this one might work a little bit better, right? Because I'm liking the contrast and everything, and I could just bring up my levels, control L, and darken it a bit. Maybe just a little bit. And then I'm also going to bring up the hue and saturation for the image and desaturate it, where you can just go up to image adjustments, desaturate. And then now I can go back to our Golden Gate Bridge. Now this mask is attached to it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them both and I'm going to link them together. zoom out, and then I'm going to just move these up a little bit, and maybe even scale it, because I like the red here. Maybe even see what this looks like if we flip it horizontally. Yeah, I like that one a little bit better. So the one step I may have missed, and that is with the rocks, after you do the mask, uh, the basic mask, you would then want to go ahead and do refine edge, right? That way you can smooth off this area. So doing smart radius, and maybe use that with shift edge and smooth. Reset those and try this again. So that for this, maybe just smooth at one. And we've got the black selected, so let's cancel out of that. Let's do Control Shift I to invert our selection, and then bring up Refine Edge. Now we have the rocks selected here. I'm going to do this one a little backwards. Now I've kind of created a smoother edge here. So, and you could have done that beforehand, but you can always go back and kind of touch it up just by control clicking the layer thumbnail and then bringing up Refine Edge. You just want to adjust your settings and make sure that it still has a smooth edge there. You don't want to be cranking these up to where you start creating white 
outlined edges or anything or fading it. So if I start messing these up, I'm going to get real faded edges because I'm doing too drastic of changes. But just enough that you get a smooth edge there. So actually looking at this, you don't have no white lines or dark black lines because you want it to kind of blend in somewhat well to actually look like it would go there, like it would be long there in the picture. So at this point, I'd go ahead and turn this in and work on the next part.